Hi everyone, thanks for checking out this interview. Today my guest is Nelly Sugu. Uh, he is an entrepreneur, he's a software engineer, and he is also an instructor. Um, he teaches coding. Uh, he'll be telling us a little bit more about you know what he does and, and the ventures that he's been working on. So he's currently in Rwanda. He's been there for uh, about six months now. Um, and he's done a lot of things and learned a lot of lessons navigating the, uh, you know, business uh, environment in Rwanda, starting up a business. And also he's seen, you know, what Rwanda has achieved in terms of development. So he'll be sharing that and also give us some advice on how to do uh, business in, in Rwanda. So without further ado, let's welcome Nelly Nelly. Uh, we're happy to have you. What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, everything is good. Um, so let's start with, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and the things that you've been working on recently? Yeah, man. Uh, like you said, uh, I'm, I'm you know, an instructor, teach coding. Um, I've done that for a while. And for the past six months, I've just been hustling, trying to make money. Uh, really just trying to find solutions and creatively fix them and hopefully get paid for it. So, I mean, which is really, that's, that's business. So, um, yeah, in a nutshell, really, I'm just trying to find opportunities and, and use my skill set and, and how I think and what I've seen and try to see if I could find solutions for them and, you know, and sell those solutions. Awesome. Cool. So recently you went back home and started a venture. So I want, I want us to talk about that a little bit. So uh, talk about Vroom, uh, what it is and, and you know, what kind of problems it's trying to solve in Rwanda. Right. So Vroom is, is a, it started out as a virtual reality arcade, right? So a place where people could come and enjoy virtual reality, mostly through gaming and but it's turned out to be this bigger thing because now people know what virtual reality is and now we're branching into tourism, we're branching into real estate, we're branching into into these other things where virtual reality or 360 models or cameras lend themselves super useful in a market where that wasn't a thing. So that's, that's really what, what it's turning out to be. But the idea behind it you know, as I was telling you, it's it's nothing. It's nothing genius. It was, it was just like, <clears throat> you know, I I I got a headset from Facebook. I, I went and won a uh, like competition, and and Facebook gave us a headset as a as a prize. And I took it home. I mean, I didn't take it home. They shipped it, and then once I got it, I put this. You know, this this. Actually, I'll show you one. You know, I put on this headset on, right? It's like, you know, this is it, right? I put it on for the first time, right? Boom, put it on for the first time. And to be honest, my mind was just blown, right? Like, there, like there's a whole world inside of this, mm. right? So yeah. I, put, I, I put it on and I realized, oh my God, I, I like, I took a tour of Paris when I was in yeah. Boston. Yeah. Like I was walking around the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And I just started going like, oh my God, this is insane. Yeah. So I, at that point I was I was about to go visit home for for a two week vacation. And I I decided, man, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna take this thing and show my parents and my friends. And there's a bunch of games in here, of course, that I couldn't wait to see my, my friends try out. Okay. So when I'm home, uh the first thing I'm like, Dad, you gotta try this thing. He's like, what is it? I'm like, just try it, just trust me, try it. So he sits in a chair, puts this thing on. And he's on a roller coaster for the first time. He's never been on a roller coaster. And I mean, he's sitting in a in a couch, and this old man is scared as hell. Like, yeah. you know, he just but he's he's enjoying himself. So I'm sitting there watching it and, and my mom is laughing hysterical. And I'm like, oh my, this is a this is an experience. Like my mom is enjoying seeing my dad scared. And I'm like, okay, this this is interesting, right? So I keep going and showing some of my friends and everybody that's doing it. After the fact, they're like, oh my God, that's, I've never experienced anything like this. And everybody that was there 
seeing them or watching them experience this were really entertained. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I don't you know. know. Like, you're like, like there's, you know, there's something here. I want yeah, more people to yeah, experience this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like, you know, there's something there, right? So basically, in, in a true entrepreneurship fashion, when everybody was playing, <laughs> I went on my phone in my notes application and I started doing some math. Mm -hmm. To see how you know how it, all this thing will make out. So I'm oh, cool. Like if I find a place, I pay this much in rent, bring this many headsets, blah blah. blah I charge this much. This you know this is the offering. Yeah. You know, give it to you know. I realized it was you know it was gonna be something. You know, yeah, something that you, can, that you can turn into a business. Yeah. yeah awesome. So how did he go about yeah. basically finding a place, um, getting your first inventory, and uh, pretty much opening for, for the first time, and uh, how did that go? Can you walk us through uh, the journey? Man, the journey was bumpy. <laughs> the most bumpiest thing I've, I've ever yeah. had experience. So, so, okay, two weeks later, I had to go back to the state. Mm -hmm. But I made sure that I had found a person that I felt like that was excited, you know, and, you know, at that point, I thought it was excited as much as I was, right? And sold him the idea, and I made the rookie mistake of trusting the person, you know, without like I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know a whole lot about them, but the fact that they were business oriented, that you know, they they, they were ready to jump. Yeah, so, was that a partner that you wanted to work with? Yeah, that, you know, that's you know, because you know, again, it's it's hard enough to you know, in a short period of time, it's hard to find somebody that's as excited about what you want to do as you. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the person, you know, that's the person I found. So I went back to the States, um, said, you know what? I'm going to buy a bunch of these things and send them over. Yeah. Right? And then um, I had, you know, I have another partner. It's been like a life partner for life. Uh, get, you know, bought the headset. She took them, you know, she came down. She's American. She came down. Um, and then when she came down, they registered the company. And then, um, you know, the, the, the guy, the Rwandan guy that was here, you know, started finding a place, uh, you know, came, you know, found a place, uh, paid for the place, you know, they did the construction, the design. So it was just basically like a teamwork thing. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually that took, it took so long. <laughs> yeah. It took so long to get up because, again, like when you're not there, you're not there, man. You know, yeah, yeah. Like you know, some some small petty little things will take like months, and yeah. You know, and I was sinking all my savings into this, so eventually I decided to just come down and and um and try to see it through, right? And um, but yeah, that's you know that in a nutshell, that's how I got started. It was bumpy. It was super yeah. bumpy. Mm. And you know, but eventually when you know when I decided to come back and and actually like be on the ground then things that had taken like months like you know between like i want to say between three to four five six months yeah got done in like a couple of weeks and then we started great so yeah. then so you bootstrap this this venture you have a place uh you know well designed and ready to start getting customers so tell me what was the experience acquiring the first customer, like the first person that walked oh, into the door and actually paid for it? Like, oh, how, how was that? How did you go about marketing, and and what was your experience um, yeah. getting your first customer into the door? So, okay, first and foremost, you know, my team and I we realized, man, we're about to to try to sell virtual reality in in Rwanda where a lot of people don't even know what it is. You know, I mean, most people even in the world have not tried it. So now we're trying to bring this product in the market that does not exist. So we pretty much have to create this market. So first thing that we knew we had to do, we knew we had to pretty much start marketing before even the product hit, you know, hit the ground, right? So yeah. we basically, you know, I hit, my, <laughs> I hit my boy Chris up and I'm like, yo, Chris, man, listen. I have this dream, I have this thing. Can we sell this experience? Can we create a story behind this? And, you know, together we found some brand ambassadors. We started running a bunch of content on Instagram. And as a result, there was a buzz 
before we even opened. Mm. So uh, it was surprising that, I mean, <laughs> the first day we opened, I think we had like three people show up. But those three people were people that have been following us. Like, I didn't know these people. Like, they, they saw some on Twitter, some on Instagram, and they were like, yo, we want to try this thing. You know, this one dude, he came in with his girlfriend. They played like, like you know, you know, almost our whole repertoire of games in one, you know, in one city. And then there was another couple that came through, and bro, like in in, in that one day, you know, even though there weren't like you know a crowd, it was pretty interesting to see like, yo, this is not a game. Like, we're actually making real money, you yeah. know, like people yeah. are paying for this thing. And it was it was so great to see how how all those efforts like you know the design like you know like how you know my team designed the place and how that attracted people as like a gaming place and then just seeing people enjoy being there and then like it's crazy like small little things right like the one thing the one big small decision we ever made was to turn the tvs off so every single time somebody you know so if i put this thing on right i can't see you so i start seeing things in virtual reality and then we had tv screens that we could chromecast yeah what i'm seeing what the other person seeing, so their friends could see it oh, okay. but then you know we had issues with internet like our internet was you know slow as crap we have money to pay for the internet. So we decided, you know what, you know, just switch this thing off. And then it turned out to be the best thing that we ever did because then, you know, people put this thing on and then there was like all these neon blue lights around them. And, you know, people were screaming and scared and their friends are like, what in the world is going on? So the first instance of people is start recording them. And when they record them, they're sharing them on their WhatsApp, on their Instagram, and it just blew up. Yeah. Wow. So the fact that, you know, the fact that they didn't know what was going on, the mm -hmm. fact that it was so stupid and weird and crazy and fun to see your friend just, just get like, literally you see somebody just fighting for their lives, but you can't see what they're fighting, but they're real. Like they're scared, they're sweating. It's <laughs> not, you know, it's just wild, right? So, yeah. so people would just start recording. So literally, like it was like you know when you go to a concert like everybody got their phones out that's literally what was happening yeah, yeah. you know you would see like you know cameras everywhere that was literally the marketing tool because it was so viral yeah everybody wanted to share the fact that they were there and then anybody sees it it's like oh my gosh what's that place i want to go check it out so yeah that's really how it all blew up yeah that's um you know that's awesome so you basically you use the um well, you would call the user-generated content uh, yep. kind of go viral because um, mm -hmm. you know, once people start sharing it on social media, that that mm -hmm. attracts more interest from other people, and they want to know like well, what's going on, what are these people seeing? Um, mm -hmm. I guess you know for people who who have never heard of virtual reality, I guess can you tell them? Uh, can you explain virtual reality to like a five-year-old? Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, All this right, is a so, new technology that a lot of people have I know. not I know. Uh, experienced, uh, and uh, you know, people might be lost um, mm -hmm. thinking, "Hey, what what is this thing?" So, can you kind of tell them wh wh what it is? So my, you know, okay, if I give you my my pitch that I give people, where people are like, "Yo, so what is that virtual reality thing that you do?" I'm like, to be honest with you. I can't explain it. You gotta try it. <laughs> but all right. So, yeah, but the that, real thing the, is, I mean, I know, I know, like the first time. Obviously, yeah. I had your headsets on uh, for the first right. time. And, like, I know, like how it feels, the experiences right. you feel, and uh, you are basically mimicking the real life uh, experience. For instance, like if you go on a roller coaster the kind of experience that you have. So virtual reality tries to um, kind of mimic that, but without you going on a roller coaster, right? Exactly. So you're basically so, so a lot of people, something virtually. Uh, instead yeah. of being there, you, you could be sitting in your room and put, uh, put those headsets on, VR headsets on, and have a Kigali Rwanda tour. 
um, yeah. you, know, you kind of feel like you're there, but even though you're not there, yeah. so it has a lot of business application and uh, and you know it can solve a lot of problems and also improve entertainment and and, and experiences and that kind of stuff. hundred percent. I mean, it's crazy, right? So, um, so you know, just how you explain, right? Like yeah. I time, I put this thing on. So when you put this thing on, whatever you see, you're there. You feel it. Like, yeah. you know, people are like, oh, I've, I've experienced that. It's like 5D. Oh, I was sitting in this in this chair in the, you know, in, in the movie theater and it was shaking. Nah, that's, nah, it's not that. Like 5D, they're, they're trying to, you know, make you feel the physical touch and, you know, shake you because it's not real. Like, it, you know, you need all that to feel it with this. Yeah all the inputs straight into your eyes and your brain make you react. Like you're scared that you're going to fall down. You feel your stomach cramp because you feel like you're falling, but you're sitting in a chair comfortably, you know? Yeah. So the craziest thing about that, the craziest thing, the applications behind that is just like you were saying, it's just endless, right? Like right now with coronavirus, where people are not, you know, traveling anywhere, I can, you know, we can make content that you can sit in New York and be in Rwanda visiting any place in Rwanda, right? Yeah. Um, we can make crazy content where, you know, there there's a military application that people are, you know, playing around with where we could actually put a mission in Saturdays and all these, you know, special forces people, whatever, all these military people could actually be in a room like this and literally train like they're on the field. So you cut down from all those logistic stuff. There's all the, like, there's this, there's this thing that we started playing around with, like helping companies train their workforce, right? To, to help them be more interactive, to trust each other, teamwork and all that kind of stuff. We have this game, right? Yeah. This game is called, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a bomb. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a, a bomb diffusing game. Yeah. It gets played by like, you know, three people. One person puts on a headset, right? And then as soon as they put on the headset, there is a bomb in their world. There is a bomb that's about to go off in about like five minutes or three minutes. And the counter is going down. And yeah. there's so many things around the bomb, but they don't know which button to press, what wire to cut. And the people that are on their team, they have a bunch of papers where they have to work together to tell this person, yo, if you send a red, a red bomb with a red wire, a blue wire and a yellow wire, you cut the yellow wire. But then this guy, you know, basically gotta tell him like, yo, I'm seeing a red button, two yellow, you know, you know, yellow wires, red wires. And then you have to communicate clearly is the first, you know, is the first wire red? Yeah. Is there only one yellow? Because then, you know, your team can tell you, ah, cool. If you see two yellow wires, one red one and a blue one, you cut the middle yellow wire. And this guy who's seeing the thing is like, what do you mean middle yellow wire, bro? Like I see two yellow wires together. Like which one do I cut? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to communicate because when this person cuts the wrong thing or presses the wrong thing, they die. Your team yeah. loses. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have yeah. a bunch of teams that are going over, you know, against each other. Like, you know, your team, can tell you, you know, stuff that don't make sense, right? Like, like they tell you like, hey, you see that button that says explode, press it. Yeah. You're looking at it and the thing says explode and you're like, nah, I'm not gonna press it. But yeah. they're telling you press the explode button. And you gotta trust the fact that they know what they're talking about because they have the rules, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, training people into like team trust, communication skills and things like this. It's like, there's just a wild, wild variety yeah, yeah. of like, yeah, applications to it. So yeah, that that's awesome. That that's great. That's amazing, Nelly. Um, and you know, it's really um interesting the way you you know brought that new technology to you know a developing uh, economy like Rwanda. Obviously, Rwanda is you know leading innovation in, in in Africa, and there are a lot of technology startups. And I think you know the addition of um adding VR into the picture you know, also you know, presents uh, a lot of solutions that, you know, to some of the problems that uh, our country faces. Um, yeah, hopefully, you know, I would love to see, you know, VR <laughs> taking over in, in Africa, you know, because I think, I think in the US, it's, uh, 
it's still a new technology, so very few uh, people use it. Uh, but you know, I mean, I think mm -hmm. I think it's exposure. It's exposure, right? So you know, before before you got exposed to a computer, you couldn't think about coding. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. before we got smartphones, you couldn't think about a, a an app on the phone, a mobile yeah. app, right? Like the second, the second week that this thing was blowing up, you got me. I got developers hit me up. This kid hit me up. He said he's, you know, he's into VR and AR, and he wants to to start seeing how I could help him or we can help him put his apps in a VR app store. You know, before coronavirus hit, man, we were trying to look at ways where we could kind of like, you know, grow and support the the VR community around here because yeah. what they had, before, you know, at least from what I know, what they had, there was like a VR meetup where people would just get up in a room and just talk about VR and watch some videos, but yeah. no headset. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was kind of like in the in the air type stuff, right? Yeah. So, we, you know, we were trying to get into like, hey, you know, y'all come through, you know, on a Sunday or whatever, you know, y'all come geek out, you know what I mean? Just yeah. because I feel like when that exposure is there, then people start seeing what's possible. And, you know, creative people yeah. start, you know, trying to create things like, you know, my dream was that, you know, all these games that people are playing, they're all made by developers in Europe and America. We can make our own games. We can all make our own VR content, VR games, and sell on the you know, app stores and whatnot. So, yeah. you know, that's that, that was the hope. And 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 now, you know, we're doing like you know virtual tours and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again, I think it's a matter of time. And then I think with this coronavirus, uh, it was it was a bad thing, but also a good thing in, in hindsight because then things like this that 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 give you a virtual experience that kind of feel like it's real. Now there's a platform for it because there's yeah. a need for it. Yeah, you know so. Absolutely. So, yeah. So definitely, you know, for the viewers, or listeners, uh, when you're in Kigali, definitely check out uh, VR V Room, and we'll talk about you know we, we'll, we'll share links and, and contact information at the end of the interview. Um, you know, if you want to experience virtual reality, uh, Kigali. Rwanda, that's where it is. Nelly uh, basically started um, a room where you can go and experience that, experience the, the all the goodies of uh, virtual reality. Yeah, so Nelly, um, I want to mm -hmm. talk about the, the kind of, obviously some of the uh, listeners, um, or viewers, they they might want to start a business in, in Rwanda or in Africa, uh, but then, you know, obviously there's some challenges to that. Uh, what would you tell people who uh, who are like aspiring entrepreneurs who, who want to you know solve problems on the African continent and um, what uh, you know what kind of problems do you see that that need solutions that they can provide? Man, there's a bunch of problems. There's a bunch of problems. I mean, I'll tell you one right now. Um, so right now, I mean, I mean, okay, okay. So right now. With coronavirus, like especially here in Rwanda, right? Uh, everywhere you go, they have to register you so that if they need to, you know, say one person gets contaminated, they can trace down, okay, where you've been, who was there at that point, you know, especially you check in, right? But people are literally checking you in on a book. So you basically go there, they write your ID number down, they, you know what I'm saying? Like you come in with a car. They basically take your number down, your everything, right? So, I mean, that's right. Like, if I had the time, yeah. I would literally like you can understand how you know yeah. because when you know something happens, God forbid, something happens, then they have to go figure out what book, flip through the pages. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think they they could be a quick boom. <laughs> yeah, take a picture of your ID or record all this digitally. And it's just a matter of like pulling up your name or your ID number, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. And so, but for me to know about that, I have to be here to see it. Yeah. So, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. So, for, for, is it for somebody who's abroad, um, part of the diaspora, diaspora community, and they want to learn about, let's say, some sectors you know some of the people that i've interviewed mentioned um like fintech and you know obviously technology which is your field 
um, uh, agriculture, um, you know, those industries. Are there any industries that you've seen where, you know, there are a lot of problems that, you know, people who have the, you know, knowledge and, 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 and uh, expertise can come in and solve and, and kind of build businesses around those? Big time, man, big time. Like, I yeah. feel like it's so easy to focus on like the biggest, like, you know, FinTech is, you know, it's like, the yeah. best catch you want. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, when you're on the ground, when yeah. you're on the ground, you realize that there is like, man, like, <laughs> like marketing, simple. Mm -hmm. Like building a website, simple. Digital you marketing. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, digital marketing, putting people online. Uh, like, like right now I have a friend, bro. Like I have a friend that just started pretty much like a outsourced company mm -hmm. where she goes, finds peop, you know, videos on YouTube with a lot of views with no subtitles yeah. and she offers transcription. Yeah. And she has a team of people here that get paid more than minimum wage yeah. to do that. Yeah. And she has about 20 people that she is paying. That's yeah. a business. That's that's a problem. So it's like there's so many things. Yeah, that, think, you know, I but think I think why you mentioned is very important. Like people focus on how this big thing that will make you uh, wealthy or rich. Um, but you know, there are those little problems that you ignore that that could, you know, serve a lot of people, create jobs. Crazy. Right, Crazy. So, yeah. like the example they just gave us um, about your friend who started an outsourcing company. Uh, she notices there's a lot of talent in, in Rwanda, and there is a problem yeah. on the internet. It's people who need these solutions, and she creates uh, an outsourcing company. That that's and a really good example. It's crazy. Um, it's crazy. So yeah. like when she hit me with it, I'm like, yo, that's genius. I, I mean, she. I mean, she, she's crazy. Like some, you know, like when you look at Thumbtack, right? Yeah. Like how you can like, you know, look up jobs and hire somebody to come move your stuff or whatever. Like she's doing something similar, but you know, what I've seen that, that, that has worked at least for people, you know, she's not like copy pasting, you know what I mean? Like she's actually creating like a ground up solution where she, she, she figures out you know what the problem is she tries to understand it she talks to people and then she builds it the way the problem is right so i guess to go back to your question is like what would i say i mean you know life life is just life right so sometimes you don't have six months to come spend in africa but what i would you know encourage people to do is hey you know when you find some time you know come spend about a week two weeks and then yeah. but when you're here though when you you know when you're here i get it sometimes you know you want to come and visit family and spend time with family and, and see people that you haven't seen and that week is going to go by just so fast right and then you're not going to be able to do any business anything but you know when you calm down just think about it as a business trip right like you're about to do some research and you know make a list of okay who do i want to talk to who can i reach out to and it's so easy nowadays with instagram you can literally hit up people right so start getting down to the ground and get some information and see, okay, who's who's excited about this? Who can I who can I work with? Who can I you know what I mean? Who can I connect with? And then and find those networks and start sharing information and, and and I gotta plug you. Like what you're doing right now is so important because again, like I feel like it's gonna bring to the surface like some of the things that are happening and probably yeah. it's gonna help a lot of people get some background context into what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So basically I, I started Bold African show just to um, allow people who are doing business in Africa to come on and kind of share their stories, um, you know, the challenges they see, uh, whatever things that have helped them on their journey, that kind of stuff to, so that we can start putting this information out and um, kind of share knowledge, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And hopefully this will help people understand the market because not everyone is gonna fly to Africa uh, or, you know, specific country, Rwanda, to learn about how business is done or like what opportunities exist. So by bringing mm -hmm. guests on the show um, and have them share their experiences and share some tips and, 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 you know, some useful advice, this will help people access that knowledge, uh, you know, in the country. Um, and, and then, 
yeah. similarly too, like I want to plug like this other network. It's called WIF. It's World Innovation Forum. Mm-hmm. I'm actually like their social media guy. So you know, plug them in. It's basically yeah. like it's a network of innovation, right? Like across Africa and you know, across the world. But you know, now we have chapters in Rwanda. We have chapters in Nigeria, Ghana. Uh, so I think Ethiopia too. Like right, I think. This week, there is going to be like pitch competition about some of the startups that are in Africa and, you know, just plugging into networks like that and just keep, you know, keeping, you know, your your ear on the ground, trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? What are people doing? I think that's going to give you the background information that, you know, to at least know what's going on, you know, so. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, Yeah, you sent me a link to, there's a virtual summit that that they're hosting, so I'll definitely join Mm -hmm. that. Um, and check it out. Uh, so mm-hmm. can, can you talk about, so you talked about, uh, you know, networking and kind of following um, following what, what's going on in Africa, you know, through those forums and stuff. Um, how else can people network with other African entrepreneurs or even, you know, people they want to work with or they want to partner with? Uh, for instance, you know, somebody could be in the U.S. and they, they're mm-hmm. looking for, a business partner they can uh, work together on, on a venture or start something. Uh, how can people go about that? Do you have any um, resources it's, that you can recommend? I mean, I've never really, so I, I think I've, I've, I've been lucky because I mean, you know, like I go home, right? Like I come back, whatever. So really my advice is not really founded in any any proof, but this is what I would do, right? Um, I, you know, again, like with social media, LinkedIn and all these things, it, you know, I think it's relatively easy to just find yeah. people, you sure. know, that are, that are yeah. posting about this, that are, that are talking about this and literally just reaching out, man, just, just, just reaching out and be like, Hey, you know, I like what you do. Uh, I'd love to, to get a few minutes of your time to run, you know, run a couple of questions about, you know, what you're doing or, you know, business in Africa in general, whatever, you know what I mean? Just take that first step because I feel like a lot of people, which, you know, I don't think it's it's so common. If you really want to do something, you always find a way, but you know, that, you know, just get over that hump of reaching out and and just called email and called reaching out to people because I think a lot of people want to give a whole lot more than a lot of people think, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I I know I'll do that and follow a show like yours. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I do reach yeah. out to people when I'm looking for guests. I reach out to people on LinkedIn, and um, you know, LinkedIn is great to find uh, other you know professionals or uh, people in your in this in in, in the same industry as you. You can kind of message mm-hmm. them and, and talk to them, connect with them, and they you know most people are, are willing to help. All you gotta do is ask, yeah. right? And obviously, some people yeah, are not yeah. respond to you if they don't know you, which is perfectly fine. But uh, the majority will. Well, you know, sometimes you just yep. need one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what what's next for you, Nelly? So now you you know you have, um, you're you're a teacher. You're a part of these organizations. You're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, obviously, I can I can I can't even keep up with things you've built. Um, and and all the organizations that you're part of. So what is the next thing for you? Like, what, what are your plans, um, you know, after <laughs> the, the economy picks up again and, and things go back to normal? Man, I don't know. I have, uh, I don't really have like a specific project per se. I just have one North Star of like, just living my life to the fullest and trying to just do as much possible, like as, as much as possible that excites me, right? And and you know, challenging or what, you know, or not. Like I wanna I wanna I wanna do something that that, that I feel like I'm alive, you know, and, and hopefully uh that gives people a lot of people permission to do the same thing, you know. So um I have I have a few things in the pipeline that I'm excited about as far as like room right now, we're we're in a crucial place right now where, you know, with corona, we closed our place down. But now we're playing around with with, with basically online an online business where where we let people rent our headsets online. So you know we take it to them. It's almost like food delivery, you know, but for headsets, right? So yeah. playing around with that idea, um, trying to venture into these virtual tours here in Rwanda, 
uh, try to venture into tourism. And really, the thing that I'm excited about that I've never done before is is putting putting room on autopilot. You know, where I don't need to be in Rwanda to to to, to make sure that it's, it's running. So I'm playing around with that idea because I honestly believe that that's where freedom and and richness really lies. You know, when yeah. when you can figure out a way to basically make businesses run without you because that frees you to do other things, right? Yeah. So uh, with that, and then the other big thing that I'm that I'm that I've been passionate about with, with everything that's happening in the states, um, you know, with, with with Black Lives Matter movement and just everything that's going on in 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 America, um, I want I want to be able to impact that and and in to impact it in a way that I can, right? So uh, I've been teaching for a while. Um, I've been teaching for you know, uh, I don't know, for profits organization where it, it really don't matter what your background is as much as, as long as you have the money to pay for the classes, right? So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm trying to find how can I impact black communities to actually teach them how to code and, and, and make all these apps and whatnot and be able to, to increase the, the amount of black people that are in the pipeline going into engineering yeah. and software development. So yeah. that's that's one thing that I'm that I'm super excited about. and. And and right now I feel like I'm in a pretty pretty good place to start looking into that. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's about it, man. You know, not a whole lot. Yeah, that's that's a lot. That, that's very important. Um, you know that you're always looking out for uh, other people and also like want to share what you know, share knowledge, and also empower those who are not in position to, uh, you know, access, uh, you know, economic. Um, you know opportunities right uh and you know definitely uh keep it up and you know good luck uh with everything mm -hmm. and i guess i want to uh you know ask you the piece of advice that you would give to you know young people um you know it could be you know life advice or business or career advice whatever it is that mm -hmm. you can help people i know you're very very <laughs> driven person uh you always you know trying to reach your highest potential like what kind of uh, advice would you give like young people who are ambitious and they want to you know achieve a lot they want to make an impact in, in, in the world man uh i mean that 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 by itself kind of you know assumes that i know a lot i really don't i just you know i think you know i've i've tried to do as much as i can with what i have so from my experience, what I would say, um, my, my first advice is, man, don't overthink it. You know, don't over, overthink it. Uh, if, if it feels right and you feel like you're up for it, go for it. Because yeah. you kill a project by overthinking it. Like, you know, everything I've ever thought, I never did, you know? And, yeah. and maybe that's a good thing, I don't know. But uh, the things that I felt like, you know what? Okay, I'm not gonna die. Uh, I might be broke, uh, but it's, it's, it looks exciting to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you know, it's the things that I look back and I'm like, man, like how did I do that? You know, mm -hmm. and, and the amount of life and relationships and learning and where you go from there, it's just tremendous, right? So, so not overthinking life or projects or you know whatever. Just you know, you know, of course, do your due diligence, right? Like you know, think about things and calculate a little bit, but just don't overthink it. Uh, yeah. That's what I would say. And, and the other thing, too, is just like, you know, I found really, really helpful the past couple of years is knowing yourself, right? Like knowing what it is that you are and what you want, because when you when you have that clarity, then you say no to a lot of things. You know, I haven't always been the kind of person that says, no, I would say yes to every single thing that was coming my way. And I was left with this much time for myself. Right. So the, the the more clarity you can get about you and what it is that really drives you and what you want to do, then anything that's not helping you in those areas, I man, you're not going to do, right? So that opens up the space of what you can do. So again, I would just say, man, man work on yourself, you know, self-awareness, spend some time with yourself and figure out who it is that you are, what you want, what makes you happy. And then when you find those things that are just making your mind work, like tickling you, go for it like really just you know do don't overthink it and you know again like i have this mantra that i <laughs> i think it's, it's extreme but if i'm not gonna die doing this man i'm doing it 
if I, you know, if the, if the, if the, if the, the worst case scenario is not death yeah. and I really want to do it, nah. Yeah. You know, because it's like, okay, I keep it broke. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's not good. It's not a great feeling. But if that's the worst case scenario, eh. yeah. Like, you well, know, you keep it Yeah. Thank you so much. That's a very powerful advice right there. You know, action always, um, you know, like taking action is always the, the right thing to do. Like once you have you have an idea and you're just thinking about it, obviously it's not just going to, you know, become a reality without you taking action. And uh, myself, I've had a lot of ideas that just, that I never pursued, right? Um, and I've had ideas that I pursued that didn't go well, but at least I tried. Uh, so yeah. that, that is very powerful, Nelly. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so for people who wanna connect with you, um, you know, get in touch, kinda, you know, learn, learn from you or just like, you know, get in touch, get to know you and maybe ask you questions about your ventures or your, your um, you know, the things that you're working on, how can they reach you? Man, my Instagram, you know, that, that's, I mean, pretty much there, man, just hit me up. Uh, any questions, anything, anything that you think I could be helped, you know, about, if you need me to connect you, somebody that you think I know, reach out. Uh, but yeah, that's my main, you know, way of communicating with people, so. My wow. Instagram is Nelly Sugu. That's N E L L Y S U G U. One word. Perfect. Yeah, I'll definitely link to your Instagram and people can get in touch with you. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. And- oh, yeah. yeah, most definitely, man. And then I can't, I can't forget to give a shout out. Can you, you know, gotta give a shout out to Tierra, man, for you know, for helping me with this whole room stuff. You know, yeah. she basically, you know, she flew from America and she lived in Rwanda for more than eight months working on this and she's never yeah. lived in you know she's never lived anywhere else other than america so you yeah. know props to that and just that commitment and also like just just that faith and, and trust and 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 uh and just I, I don't know like the willingness to just see that through so and yeah. that, that whole you know the home room experience when you walk in everything our brand like just the colors everything the whole building that's her she designed the whole thing yeah so. That's awesome. Hopefully, you know, she's watching and uh, <laughs> she'll notice that you acknowledged her efforts and um, appreciate yeah. her support. All right, Nelly. Um, so we'll end this now and uh, we'll be in touch as always. All right, man. Most definitely, brother. All right. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.